hello everyone so now we are starting with the discussion of the quants okay uh, basic review okay so you can give the heading as quants as i said that important topics will be probability important topics will be probability hypothesis testing thereafter regression and you can expect uh, even two three questions from the distribution section as well where the most common distribution will be uh, normal distribution log normal distribution poisson distribution and exponential distribution okay these are the most common one clear so let us start one by one okay okay so give the heading sample moments we are starting with sample moments now some part of this particular topics is very easy it is discussing about the mean standard deviation median and modes okay something which we are very comfortable okay so something uh, which is very logical okay like unbiased estimate if i want to write the formula for unbiased estimate unbiased estimate clear of s square that is variance it is going to be what 1 by n minus 1 sigma x minus mu whole square clear if i want to find out the unbiased estimate for the variance then we are going to use this particular formula and if we are asked to calculate the biased okay then we are not going to divide it by n minus 1 we are going to divide it directly by 1 by n so we are giving this 1 as extra degree of freedom clear to make it unbiased estimate now write down next point that i am just discussing only the important points which student might confused or they might forget okay kind of the revision so write down most widely used measure of central tendency most widely used measure of central tendency central tendency must have following properties must have following properties clear so what are those three properties number 1 all interval and ratio data set have an arithmetic mean arithmetic mean that is am all interval and ratio data sets have an arithmetic mean write down second point all data values are considered and included in the arithmetic mean computation all data values are considered write down all data values are considered while you are calculating arithmetic mean what is the meaning of this point number 2 suppose you have 100 observation okay and you are calculating the mean so they are saying that you should use all 100 okay you cannot use 90 or 80 or 70 observation while calculating the mean clear write down number 3 a data set has only one arithmetic mean a data set has only one arithmetic means means if this is a data set so it will be having a single arithmetic mean that suppose it came down to be dollar 75 clear in whatever way you will calculate the arithmetic mean the mean will remain the same that is 75 dollars if you will pick up this particular observation clear so if your data is whether is in interval or in ratio it will be having the arithmetic mean clear you have to consider all the values in the data set while calculating the arithmetic mean and the third if you have a data set it will be having one single arithmetic mean okay no other mean is possible for the single data set next while calculating the variance while calculating variance or sigma square you can use this formula as well write down expected value of x minus expected value of x whole square bracket close clear this is the variance of sigma square if you are using the value of x and expected value of x clear this is nothing but x minus x bar whole square and this expected means what this expectation means what this is the means average and what is the meaning of average average means sum total divided by n sum total divided by 
n clear next uh, is the difference between the point estimate and estimator point estimate and estimator so you can take this point estimate is like mu and estimator is sigma x divided by n so point estimate is about talking about the parameter a single value parameter an estimator is the formula is the formula as how to calculate that particular point estimate now the next point which is important in this particular topic is that blue blue okay what is that blue best line write down best linear best linear unbiased unbiased estimator best linear unbiased estimator clear so let us write down a paragraph for this okay so the blue is the best estimator of the population is the best estimator of the population see i really uh, request you to make the notes because these are uh, going to be very simple very short for the exam notes kind of okay so if you are reading these notes 2 uh, 3 days before the exam you will be ensuring that you will be covering at least some of the important and the highlighted part of our syllabus okay the blue is the best estimator of the population mean population mean available because available because it has the minimum variance it has the minimum variance it has the minimum variance of any linear unbiased of any linear unbiased of any linear unbiased estimator clear now uh, writing the very important part of this paragraph that is when the data is iid when the data is iid when the data is iid the sample mean is considered to be blue the sample mean is considered considered to be blue clear iid means independent and identical independent and identical clear so if your data is following iid independent and identical distribution then the sample mean is considered to be as the blue what is the meaning of the blue best linear unbiased estimation so you can say that your sample mean is equal or close to your population mean when when your data is iid clear now write down next statement the sample mean is an the sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population mean the sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population mean the sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population mean because because the sampling distribution because the sampling distribution of the sample mean of the sample mean has the has the smallest variance has the smallest variance of any other of any other unbiased estimator of the population mean of any other unbiased estimator of the population mean clear they are saying that the variance between the sample mean and the population mean is the lowest clear actually this is a carry forward to this means the same thing they have written in a different way clear now approaching to the next point that is law of large number law of large number clear write down first statement increasing the sample size increasing the 
sample size and uh, even you can write down these with arrows if you understand that n is your observation n is your sample so if you are increasing the sample size it results in it results in better estimates it results in better estimates it results in better estimates of the true population distribution of the true population distribution the concept is very simple concept is very simple if suppose in your class you have 100 students and the mean of the 100 students weight suppose came down to be 40 kg clear if you will take the sample of 10 students and suppose in that sample uh, some students who are very weak maximum probability that they will come in that 10 sample and suppose the average came down to be 30 kg and you see that there is a huge difference between the sample mean and the population mean but so now you increases the sample size to 40 students you will see that you will uh, approach towards 40 but currently it's still 34 kg it improved your estimation improved clear by increasing the sample size but yet but yet very far away you increase the sample size to 90 students and you will see that now your average will be close to 38 or 39 that means they are very close to the population mean so they are saying that when you are increasing the n when you are increasing the sample size your estimators that is mean and sigma they will represent the true population that is the 40 kg that is the 40 kg clear so write down the first property of a consistent estimator write down if you are making this notes it will become very easy for you to revise at the end and i am picking up only the important statements okay so write down the first property of a consistent estimator the first property of a consistent estimator is that is that as the sample size increases is that as the sample size increases the finite sample bias is reduced to zero the finite sample bias is reduced to zero now reduced to zero means if your sample size will become 100 then what is the mean 40 and you will see that now the biasness is zero because the population mean is 40 sample mean is 40 the biasness came down to zero clear the second property of a consistent estimator the second property of a consistent estimator is that as the sample size increases this one as the sample size increases the variance of the estimator the variance of the estimators approaches zero see over here the variance was very high when you have taken the 10 sample size the variance was 40 minus 30 that is 10 when you have increased it to 40 then it will become 6 it's decreasing clear when it become 90 you approach 38 still 2 but when you will reach 100 you will see that your variance will come down to 0 your variance will come down to 0 so when you will increase the sample size the bias will come down to 0 and the variance between the sample and the population will also come down to 0 clear write down next the property of consistent the property of consistency the property of consistency ensures that ensures that estimates from large samples estimates from large samples estimates from large samples have small deviation have small deviation from the true population mean you can see that when the sample size was 90 when the sample size was 100 it is not deviating much from the population mean but when your sample size was small that is 10 you are deviating a lot from the population mean are you clearing okay so now let us write down the formula for the skewness and kurtosis skewness and kurtosis very important they can uh, ask you to calculate it in the exam 1 n then sigma x minus x bar whole q divided by sigma cube this is for skewness and what is for kurtosis 1 by n sigma 
x minus x bar whole to the power 4 and sigma to the power 4. This one is for kurtosis, this one is for skewness. So now if we will see the normal distribution, if we will see the normal distribution, it will be like this. Okay, The mean, median and mode, they all will lie over here, clear? But if I will see a say positive skewness, okay, then positive skewness will be somewhat like this. Its mean, median and mode will be in the positive side mean median and mode clear and what about the negative skewness negative skewness will be like this it's mean median and mode towards the right clear this one is negative skewness negative skewness this one is positive skewness and this one is our normal distribution clear now for the kurtosis for the kurtosis this is my normal distribution this is my normal distribution clear then lipocurtic more in the median more in the median and less towards the tail known as leptocurtic okay you can write it down as well leptocurtic clear leptocurtic and there is another one that is plytocurtic that is more towards the tail very heavy tails and very less in the between side clear this one is plytocurtic. Write down. Plytocurtic distribution. Clear? So, this one is known for the large deviation from the mean. Okay. So, this purple will go little towards the left and right. Clear? because the normal distribution you see ends over here but this leptocurtic tails are moving way beyond the normal distribution so means there is higher risk in the tails that is leptocurtic clear okay so this much is enough for the sample moments now let us come to probability nothing much discussion in the form of revision but yes you should focus more on questions for probability if you want to expertise in probability the only way to expertise is via questions but yes i will discuss few of the key points so now we start with the two types of probability one is the conditional probability and another one is the unconditional probability conditional means one event is dependent upon the other event means I say that it's cloudy this is one event and the other event is rain so suppose this is A and this is B I'm asking tell me what is the probability of B provided today it's cloudy today it's cloudy tell me what is the probability that today it will rain clear but unconditional my marks and rain Today I got 80%, today I got 80%, whether it will rain or not, these two are unconditional because these two are unrelated, probability A and B, they both are independent to each other or we can say them as marginal probability, marginal probability, clear? And there is another term that is joint probability, what is the probability of A, B? What is the probability that today it will it will be cloudy and it will rain? So, what is the probability that today it will be cloudy as well as today it will rain? So, we call this as joint probability. Joint probability. 
clear now apart from that there are two events a and b clear if they cannot take place at the same point of time if these two events cannot take place at the same point of time that means suppose event a is crying and event b is smiling and you are saying that these two cannot take place at the same time because for this you are sad and for this you are happy so these two emotions will not take place so these two type of events are known as mutually exclusive events mutually exclusive events mutually exclusive events then we have two types of uh, probability function one is the discrete and another one is the continuous discrete means where the probability is in finite numbers finite numbers and where the probability is infinite clear like if i will say how many number of students are there in the class how many number of students are there in the class so you can count them like 1 2 3 4 5 6 but if i am collecting the samples like what is the weight of the student so it can be 48 it can be 48.01 48.007 it depends upon how much perfection you are taking how much perfection you are taking so we call this as a continuous and this one is known as finite or we call it as discrete clear next suppose you have a coin and you are tossing it two possible option head or tail now i ask you what is the probability of head plus what is the probability of tail this will come down to 1 this will come down to 1 clear so this is known as total probability rule total probability total probability rule now this is all about the probability clear now let us come to the random variable again the same point discussed in the random variable that is we have discrete random variable and we have continuous random variable the same thing number of students and weights or height of the student clear weights or height of the student then we have probability mass function pmf probability mass function which we will denote by small fx small fx clear or you can write it like this probability x equals to now write down for pmf very important write down it gives us the probability it gives us the probability that the outcome of a discrete random variable see pmf is discussing about the discrete random variable what is the probability for the discrete random variable x will be equal to a given number small x will be equal to the given number small x clear this is capital x this is small x but the most important point the pm pmf is about the discrete this is about the discrete random variable clear next is about the cdf cdf which is the cumulative distribution function write down cdf is cumulative distribution function its values lie between 0 to 1 its value lie between 0 to 1 means i know that if i roll a die if i roll a dice what is the probability of getting 6 1 by 6 what is the probability of getting 5 1 by 6 what is the probability of getting 4 1 by 6 now i ask you these these all are these all are pmf probability mass function clear but if i ask you what is the probability that if i throw a dice if i throw a dice value of x will be greater than or equals to 4 if i am asking this if i am asking this then the answer is 3 by 6 or you can say 1 by 2 this is your cumulative distribution function where i am not asking about a single value i am asking about values as 5 4 5 and 6 4 5 and 6 that is known as cdf and the next point of the discussion is the probability density function that is pdf probability 
density function and this is for continuous random variable this one is for continuous random variable continuous random variable clear now let us come to our common univariate random variables write down give the heading common univariate common univariate random variables see this one is about understanding the distributions like uniform distribution then bernoulli distribution then third number binomial distribution binomial distribution then we have poisson distribution poisson distribution normal distribution and log normal normal and log normal distribution chi square distribution and student t and f distribution t and f distribution clear these are the seven distribution discussed in this particular topic clear so if i talk about the uniform distribution if i talk about the uniform distribution if you remember the graph is somewhat like this the graph is somewhat like this clear and how to find out the value for the uniform distribution how to find out the value for the uniform distribution we will take we will take suppose you need to find out the probability between these two areas so you will take this area you will take this area in the numerator and this area in the denominator clear suppose it starts with 2 it ends with 12 and over here you have 4 and say 6 clear so the gap is 2 that will be in the numerator and the whole gap is 10 that will be in the denominator that means what is the probability of the shaded area what is the probability that you will get the shaded area it is 20% clear are you getting the point next is the bernoulli distribution it's about a single trial in which only two outcomes are possible a single trial in which only two outcome are possible means you toss a coin you toss a coin you can either get a head or you can get a tail in that type of situation we are going to use the bernoulli distribution now the better version of the bernoulli distribution is the binomial distribution which also has two outcome whether head or whether tail but in this you can take multiple trials n number of trials are possible so in bernoulli only a single trial is possible in binomial you can take n number of trials clear so now if you want to write down the function for the bernoulli distribution okay it is going to be px 1 minus p 1 minus x p is the probability p is the probability and x is your head p is your probability and x is your head clear now if suppose this is for bernoulli what will be the distribution function for the binomial clear the only thing that will be added the only thing that will be added is your ncp write down ncp clear then probability of x 1 minus p probability of n minus x clear this n n is the number of trials number of trial this is something which is new added to the bernoulli distribution clear so now how to find out this one write it down it is going to be n factorial okay uh, rather than its p it will be x okay n factorial then n minus x factorial and x factorial clear this is how we calculate the first term write down what is the meaning of this first term number of ways to choose x from n number of ways to choose x from n means you have tossed the coin 100 100 times okay then how many ways you can choose the head how many ways you can choose the head then we have the poisson distribution it's about the number of phone calls in one hour number of phone calls number of phone calls in 
वन आवर अगेन दिस इज अबाउट द पी एम एफ प्रोबेबिलिटी मास फंक्शन बिकॉज द नंबर ऑफ फोन इज काउंटेबल क्लियर सो वट इज द फंक्शन फॉर दिस वट इज द फंक्शन फॉर दिस इट इज गोइंग टू बी लैमडा ओके लैमडा इज द एस्टिमेटर फॉर द पॉइजन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन क्लियर लाइक इन द नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वी यूज मीन एंड स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन फॉर द पॉइजन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वी हैव द टर्म लैमडा सो लैमडा टू दावर एक्स ई टू दावर माइनस लैमडा होल डिवाइडेड बाय एक्स फैक्टोरियल होल डिवाइडेड बाय एक्स फैक्टोरियल क्लियर इन द एग्जाम दे कैन दे विल गिव यू द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स एज वेल एज दे विल गिव यू द वैल्यू ऑफ लैमडा यू जस्ट नीड टू फाइंड आउट द प्रोबेबिलिटी so till now if we we'll see from here we have covered up four distribution uniform bernoulli binomial and poisson now this one belongs to probability density function probability density function they are going to be the for the continuous random variable continuous random variable and with this respect uh, the normal distribution log normal distribution we are very much comfortable so no need to revise because it will come everywhere in many places okay so it will settle down in your subconscious mind with each and every stuff like tnf too much used in that hypothesis testing chi square is there in hypothesis also in regression then this normal and log normal is everywhere clear now from the next topic the only point which i feel i can discuss in this uh, short session is the features of write down features of features of iid features of iid sequence of random variable sequence of random variable sequence of random variable features of iid sequence of random variable clear so here you will see in total seven points if you wish you can write it down it will be like uh, you can expect question from this area because uh, many a times i have seen that uh, student used to say that uh, so this area was there in the exam so write it down point number 1 variables are independent of all other components variable are independent of all other components variable are independent of all other components second variables are all variables are all from a single univariate distribution from a single univariate distribution variable are all from a single univariate distribution variables all have the same momentum variables all have the same momentum fourth expected value of the sum of iid expected value of the sum of n iids there will be many observations right so expected value of the sum of n iids random variable is equals to mu random variable is equals to mu clear n mu actually because if i talking about the sum then it is going to be n mu then the variance of the sum of n iid variance of the sum of n iid is equals to the random variable is equals to n sigma square random variable is equals to n sigma square variance of the sum of iids random variable grows linearly grows linearly and the last variance of the average of multiple iids variance of the average of multiple iids random variable decrease as n increases random variable decreases as n increases clear now if i talk about the hypothesis testing okay so you need to focus more on the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis how to calculate the test statistics x minus mu divided by the sigma x minus mu divided by the sigma clear hypothesis testing can be one tail test or it can be two tail test one tail test how you'll get to know that it is talking about equals to something equals to something it is a two tail test if it's a one tail test then greater than or less than sign will be there greater than or less than sign will be there if it is two tails equals to something 0 1 2 3 anything but if it is one tail then it is going to be greater than or less than sign will be there clear the main area in between is fail to reject h0 fail to reject your null hypothesis outside outside you will reject h0 in between fail to reject h0 outside 
reject H0. Clear? If you lie within the horizon, you are going to accept H0 or you can say fail to reject H0. Clear? Then type 1 error, type 2 error. Type 1 error, type 2 error. What is, uh, you can expect question from this type 1 and type 2. Okay? Then what is this type 1 error? Write down the rejection of the null hypothesis when it is actually true. What is type 1 error? You are rejecting null hypothesis when it is true. Where you reject actually? You reject in the tails. You reject in the tails. Clear? If your tails are very big, if your tails are very big, then your probability of type 1 error will increase because you are rejecting a true null hypothesis and where you reject? You reject in the, in the tails. You reject it in the tails. So if your tails are very small, very high probability that your null hypothesis will be accepted. Clear? So type 1 error will be higher when the tails are larger. What is type 2 error? Failure to reject the null hypothesis when it is actually false. Your null hypothesis is false and you accepted it. Why you accepted it? So because the middle area is very large that everything comes and fall inside it. Everything comes and fall inside it. So what should we do to remove the type 2 error? We should increase the tail size. We should increase the tail size. See, if you will increase the tail size, type 2 error will decrease and type 1 error will increase and vice versa. Clear? Then focus on the p-value and the testing of the equality of mean. Testing the equality of the mean. That uh, very big formula t is equals to x bar minus y bar. In the denominator, you will see that uh, sigma square plus sigma square minus 2 cov sigma 2 cov of x and y divided by n. That formula testing the equality of mean. Clear? Now, finding out the regression. Okay, if you are doing the regression, you need to ensure that your y is a continuous random variable. Your y is a continuous random variable. Very important point. Okay. Now to use the linear regression, the following three conditions need to be satisfied. If you are using a linear regression, you need to satisfy three conditions. Means, first of all, the relationship between y and x, it must be linear. You cannot use y equals to b0 plus b1 x square. That is wrong. But yes, your b1, b2, b3, they can be square. But the relationship between y and x, it needs to be linear. Then second very important point, the variance of the error term is independent of the observed data. The variance of the error term is independent. Variance is independent. That means at the end, you used to add that error term, right? That is independent of the observed data. Clear? And the third point, all x variables should be observable. All x variables should be observable. Clear? Then the formula of finding out the beta, we have studied it earlier as well. That is the covariance divided by the variance of x. Variance of x. Don't divide it by variance of y. Covariance of x and y divided by variance of x. Then the very important point is the r square. The r square represents the r square. You can write it down as well. The r square represents the portion of variance in the dependent variable, again, the R square represents the proportion of variation in the dependent variable that is explained by the independent variable. How much your x are able to explain the y? As simple as that. How much your x are able to explain the y? As simple as that. Some of the assumptions which are done inside the regression. Number one, the expected value of the error term. The expected value of the error term conditional on the independent variable conditional on the independent variable what is the independent variable x1 x2 x3 okay it is going to be zero then second all observation are independent and identically distribution means there is a need of iid there is a need of iid it is unlikely that large outliers will be observed in the data so means in the data you should not have the large outliers the variance of x is strictly greater than zero the variance of x is strictly greater than 0. The variance of the error term is constant. The variance of the error term is constant. You will study that in homoscedasticity. Clear? Now you need to remember all that formulas of uh, finding out the coefficient of determination that is r square, adjusted r square. Very important. Okay, you can expect them in the exam. r square as well as adjusted r square. Then the formula to find out the f statistic. 
okay so let us write down the formula first of all to find out the r square that is ess divided by tss ess divided by tss clear this is the x plane part and this is the total part clear adjusted r square adjusted r square n minus 1 divided by n minus k minus 1 that whole will be multiplied with 1 minus r square clear okay so i have covered almost uh, most of the important portion of the quants the remaining portion of the regression where you see that heteroscedasticity multicollinearity that are uh, very well explained in the main lectures very difficult to cover up in this uh, small sessions okay so they are explained very well there then time series uh, you will see the topic is quite difficult i totally agree with the fact but in the exam you will see the questions are uh, going to be very easy from the time series so make sure you will not miss the important points and the important formulas clear and the last two topics are easily you can cover up with the thorough reading but yes i have covered most of the part of it in this 40 minute session clear so i am ending this lecture here thank you